a spider, found him in the sink. So we'll put him, uh, put him over here, I reckon. Come on, little fella. There you go. So there's a question about what's the deal with the martial law in Thailand right now. It's not, not an issue at all. Not an issue at all. There's still, look at the fruitarian lovers, the vegans who are in Thailand now making YouTube videos. They're like, what, what martial law? You know, there's people on Instagram taking photos of like, hanging out with the, uh, the machine gun wielding soldiers. It's, I always find it amusing when people have never been to a country, never spent time there, and they have an opinion of it. And that's fine, but it's sort of very amusing when they're like, oh, don't go to Thailand, it's so dangerous, oh my God. <laughs> They've never even been to Thailand. First I went to Thailand, 2005, my grandma said, they're gonna, they're gonna drug you and cut out your kidneys and you're gonna wake up in a bathtub full of ice with a note saying get to the hospital in 30 minutes or you're gonna die. They're gonna steal your organs. <laughs> My mum is just like freaking out. So they just, but they've never been there. They've never actually been to Thailand. And the few people that have been to Thailand are more on the tourist trail. So not many people have actually travelled Thailand. A big difference between being a tourist and a traveller. So when you come to the Royal Till 4 Thailand Fruit Festival, you're going to be a traveller. Okay, so what we're doing is we're, we're donating our time. We want to hang out with you. We want to educate people. This is not a money-making event or whatever. This is to create grassroots movements. This is what it's about. I mean, unfortunately, so few people in any movement will give their time to educate others. That's what we want to do. We want to make a lot of money. We want to make a lot of fucking armies of carved up, healthy, fit, thriving, fruit-loving, carb-crunching vegans. That's our goal. So the martial law, not an issue at all. Hold on. I'm going to have a Kenyan dinner. Some organic polenta. Pour that in. This is what the canyons live on. This is called Ugali. What the world's fastest runners live on. The leanest cultures live on. Polenta, organic corn. I'll just stir that around for a few minutes. What I'm going to have it with? A range of sauces, a vegan, vegan mushroom sauce, Worcestershire sauce. Super vegans. Not a Worcestershire sauce is vegan, but you can find easy ones. I've got organic sweet thai, I've got um, another organic bolognese, I've got a barbecue, I've got a little uh, ketchup manis. So people say, well, how much salt do you use? Well, if some of these are, this one's pretty salty, but you use less of it. You just use less of it because it's so salty, so you don't need to use much of it at all. So there you go, a bit of a mix. A lot. Using different condiments helps you eat more, so you can get more in. To make the garlic, you're better off actually pouring it in slowly, otherwise it doesn't lump up as much. So. I just poured the whole package in, that was a bit of a mistake, you meant to just pour it in gradually. It's just corn and water, organic corn and water. So you make it a sweet meal or a savory meal, whatever you want, very lean, very low fat, very high carbohydrate. And so that cool, ready to roll, ready to roll. So let's see why Kenya's so lean, this protein's low, fat is almost non-existent. <laughs> it's like eating bananas, it's like eating bananas, low salt, carbohydrate nice and high, fantastic stuff. Interesting, interesting bike at the bike rack. We've got a bit of a SRAM red combo, quite a long stem, pretty low seat height. The Ontario Durace 6800 combo, Chris King hub set, and the nice fenders there. The ultralight brakes, ultralight brakes on the 600 grand four. We're a beast. Good little Figsy, eh? Good little Figsy dog. Here, Figsy. POV. Little Figsy snorts. Here, Figsy. Come on. Little carrot chomps, Figsy. Do you like the um? Oh, are you still filming? Still filming the darling. Oh, yeah. Fixie. Come on, Fixie, you're safe. You've known me for a year, Fixie. <laughs> it's only been a year and a couple of months.
Come on, Daisy. Yeah. Scavenger dog, Fixie, what are you looking for? Australian jackfruit here, local, $130 US, and this will serve one person because it's mostly just this. That's a me, that person. <laughs> and me. It's, mo it's mostly just this, this. You throw this away and the seeds away, so you get the orange bits there. That's the jackfruit. Um, so that's what you eat here. So you eat the orange bits. So that's $130, local Australian produce, affordable for any family. So here's what I'm having for lunch. You need to get the potassium in the muscles. Nothing better than to get potassium than ripe bananas. These are, they could be a little bit riper. They could be a little bit riper, but they're, they're good enough. And I've got a cup of coconut sugar here. Boom. And we'll put these bananas in. Let's do it. So peel these bad boys. I'll talk while I'm peeling. Potassium is so vital. It's so vital for muscular function. If you don't have enough potassium, most people are potassium deficient. Most people are potassium deficient in, in Australia and the US. Because eating so much salt, all that salt just flushes your potassium out. And just, you can just see it in people's bodies, just bloated from excess salt and uh, not enough muscle contraction to really power. People might be good for one minute and then, pfft, like the, even the guys in the gym, they just, they're good for like one rep and then bam, they're, they're done. Or they need some pre workout. Fucking, all that pre-workout powders people take, crazy stuff. So these bananas are just, they're a little bit start like, they could wait, but that's all I got. In Australia, you gotta go what you got, because that's how it is. But uh, I'm grateful. So bananas are just the best fuel. Ripe bananas, that potassium, like, I went out to ride this morning, and I, I trained with a power meter. I like to be objective, right? And I could just tell that I wasn't really hitting my wattages that well. And I've carved up, but I knew there's not enough potassium in the system. So, I needed another banana meal to top that up. So, we will get these bananas in. What I might do is I might blend this jug up. And then be able to ram in the, uh, how many bananas are we up to anyway? It was close to 20, wasn't it? 18 to 22 or something like that. Either way, just ram that fucking jug full. Put in a cup of sugar if you want. The sugar's optional. If you're in Thailand or US and your bananas are really sweet, then you, you don't need to add the sugar. But if you're in Australia and your bananas taste like green potatoes, then you might have to add a little bit of sugar. It's just your choice. Sweeten to taste. Sweeten to taste. For me, that's a cup of sugar when I'm in Australia, generally. Because bananas here, they're pretty low quality compared to what you get in the US. Because we don't have that fruit growing culture in, in Australia like we do in the US. Um, all the Colombians and Ecuadorians and stuff, we don't really have that much here, it's, it's unusual. Most uh, most farmers in Australia just grow absolute rubbish. And people don't really have contrast, so they can't really demand better quality, can they? Unfortunately, so do what you can do. Do what you can do. Let's blend this bad boy up. This is a magic touch, if you can see this. I call this the Duran Rider Squeeze. Get the fist in there, push it in, push it in. That's what we're talking about, baby. People go, you can't put 20 bananas in a Vitamix jug. Yes, you fucking can. Use the fist of fury. So what we do to wind down, what I recommend we do is we just put one little light on here. We turn that big light off. So it helps us wind down. You want to wind down before you go to bed. So try and turn off as much blue light electricity as possible. So have a little bit of light on, a little less. And that's how you wind down. Avoid having the lights blasting you at night time. It helps you produce better hormones. Better hormones is more leanness, okay? So turn off the lights to get leaner. All right, so we're just looking at that Secret Eaters video and how they're talking about, oh, man, you're heavy. It's all muscle. Cut, it's all cut muscle. back on the bananas, will you? It's all muscle. <laughs> and we're just, we're talking about how, you know, they focus on the calories. They focus on, they're like, oh, it's too many calories. Mm -hmm. Even though it's a source of calories, it's where the calories come from. They're coming from animal fat and junk like that. It's not you know, calories aren't calories. They are. You know, you, you put someone on a diet of three thousand calories of like butter and animal products and you know food like that, 
and then you put them on 3,000 calories of fruits and veggies. Big difference. Of course they're going to look different. They're definitely going to look different. Calories, not calories. What they do is they teach you that calories are calories. Even Doug says calories, calories, but it's not. It's how your body metabolizes different calories. The carbohydrate, fat, and protein calories all metabolize differently. Yeah. Fat and protein gives you insulin levels high. That's why people who eat a lot of fat and protein are heavy. And when you go to Kenya and Thailand and was eating rice, corn, bananas, they're slim because they have low insulin. Yeah. Judge by results, not by theory. Calories are not calories because they metabolize differently in your body. End of fucking day. That's why we can eat so much and stay so slim. What couples do you honestly know that eat as much as us at a restaurant? Bingo. <laughs> Bingo. Low I mean, even, even the um, restaurant, the owners, you know, have to come out and look at us. You know, the chefs, you, they're like, whoa, these people are eating so much. You want to eat low insulin spiking foods. Yeah. Oh, low God. insulin levels. So heavy, the, the legs are breaking. The legs are breaking. <laughs> All right, All right, so, oh, my God. I have to stop him now. He gets out of control. Can't walk for the okay, don't forget to go fruit or root yourself, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to deal with this one. Oh, mm. pushing out a farm or something.